Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It has continued to be very dry recently and I think we're long past a point where many farmers and growers would welcome some rain. So is there any on the way? Well, I think the answer to that is yes, but the amounts and details are uncertain. I'll begin by taking a look at the first week. The animation today is using data from the GFS model. It runs from 18 GMT Tuesday the 3rd. At the outset, it's quite a messy picture. There are some showers in the south and the west. I think the GFS is overdoing the extent of them here. Also, just for northwest, there are some more persistent outbreaks of rain. And in the short term, those push eastwards across the UK. Then high pressure builds up from the south. However, as we head through Friday, a band of rain pushes south eastwards. And there are some suggestions here that it could well bring some heavy bursts, even to parts of southern and central Britain. That clears away and high pressure returns for weekend. It's dry across virtually the whole of the UK. But as we go into the early part of the next week, the high pressure slips away southwards and a more active Atlantic flow returns to most of the UK, particularly the north with the risk of showers or longer spells of rain at times. Also, the tighter packed isobars suggest that it will be turning windier. I think by this point there is a lot of uncertainty in the details and I will come back to that in a moment. Quick look at some of the temperature charts. 15 GMT Thursday the 5th. Maximums around 18.19 in the south, perhaps a little higher with the tendency of GFS to undershoot. Somewhat cooler in the north and the west. But I think southern and central regions feeling pleasantly warm in sunny intervals. Moving forwards to Saturday, that's after the rain band has cleared southeastwards. Temperatures have dipped a little, down to 16s in the south, 14s, 15s in the north. I think though, in sunny spells, it would still be feeling pleasant. Now, is there a frost risk still, or have we now left it behind? According to the GFS, at least there are some signs, even in southern Britain, of chilly nights at times. The, this chart is 06 GMT, Monday the 9th, shows forecast minimum, minimums down to 3 Celsius here in parts of southern and central England. A touch of ground frost would certainly be possible in some locations. I think gardeners and farmers just need to keep an eye on that because it really will depend on the extent of cloud cover, wind speeds and the air mass which we have over us at that point. But it is, as I say, something to be aware of. Taking a look at the bigger picture, the European temperature chart for Monday the 9th of May, I brought this up because it really highlights that the very warm or hot weather is beginning to build in southern Europe. Maximums here in Spain, Portugal around 30 Celsius, and that warmth is spreading north eastwards into France, the Low Countries, and Germany. The UK remaining on the edge of it, according to the GFS, which has the Atlantic having a good deal of influence. But I think with the warmth being as close as this is showing, it could well start to reach the UK at times if that Atlantic influence is a little bit less pronounced than the model is suggesting it will be. The MoGreps temperature chart, for, I brought up Burke Hampstead here because I wanted a more out-of-town location than London, but still in southern Britain. Uh, just to highlight the possibility of ground frost as we go forwards, on the 8th of May it's showing minimums down to around 3 Celsius on some of the runs. Uh, other runs in the ensemble are going for higher values, but again it's just suggesting that chance of ground frost remaining a threat. Rain. Well, as the animation showed, there is some rain around in all parts of the UK, but the amounts are quite difficult to forecast accurately. The charts here show total precipitation for days 0 to 5. On the left, it's from the European ECM. On the right, it's the GFS. Generally wettest in the northwest of the UK, 
But according to the GFS in particular, there is some significant rain even in central and eastern England. Moving forwards to the charts for the days 0 to 10 period. Once again, wet in the northwest, so western Scotland, north, western England, northern Ireland especially. Less rain as you head southeastwards, although once more the GFS is suggesting significant amounts even in East Anglia and much of central and southeastern England. Drier in those uh, regions according to the ECM model. So, do the deterministic models tend to agree with each other at the end of the first week or have they gone off in different directions? Recently they've been quite consistent. Let's see what happens today. Here's the GFS, Tuesday the 10th, the high pressure slipping southwards and the Atlantic returning, particularly across the north of the UK. At the same time, the Canadian model shows high pressure having more influence, the Atlantic probably being held at bay at least for a little while in southern and central regions. The German ICON model also shows the high pressure area remaining influential. The European ECM, quite different again to the GFS, a more summary looking pattern, the Atlantic there less active and high pressure across the UK keeping things potentially drier, although there still would be a risk of some rain around or showers. Finally, the UK Met Office Global Model. This one is the best, I would suggest, if it's dry and settled weather that you're hoping for. High pressure remaining dominant at this point. So, quite a disparity between those deterministic models, highlighting a lot of uncertainty towards the end of the first week. GFS probably going for the most unsettled pattern with high pressure slipping southwards more than it does on any of the other model runs. I think that really brings up a lot of question marks about whether it's going to be right or not. Sometimes it tends to be uh, do very well in this sort of setup and it can lead the other models. On this occasion though I've got a suspicion that high pressure will be having more influence than GFS suggests, maybe not as much as the UK Met Global has here. All in all though, probably drier in southern and central Britain at least at this point. What about the second week of the forecast period? As ever, trends and probabilities, not specifics at this range. I'll start by taking a look at the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top are clearly signaled to be above the average, which is shown by the thick black line. The ensemble mean where the purple line remains above it throughout. It's worth noting as well that there are some very warm runs appearing. They may not be in the majority at the moment, but there, are a, there is a significant minority there. And I think in general, those are the ones which are tapping into that warmth, that heat which is building over southern Europe. So we could be seeing the forming of a plume pattern, a Spanish plume with that very warm upper level there moving towards the UK. It is something to keep an eye on because a number of the operational runs have shown that scenario evolving through this point, through this period. Rain, some spikes there continue, not looking particularly wet, but not totally dry either. So again, it's really highlighting the uncertainty about just how much influence high pressure will be having through this time period through the second week. Going up to Glasgow, most of the runs are close to the 30-year norm here, the ensemble mean tracking the thick black line, that's air temperatures. Nonetheless, there are a few which are bringing in much warmer upper level air later on, but, but fewer than there were on the plot for London. But it's wetter here, far more spikes on the London plot and a number of them are quite big which suggests possibly large rain totals being generated by some of the individual runs in the ensemble. To summarise those two charts, 
warmer and drier in the south, wetter and cooler in the northwest. A lot of uncertainty though about the balance between low pressure to the northwest and high pressure to the south, maybe to the east of the UK. Whether or not we'll tap into some of that very warm air over southern Europe is a big question. The two meter temperatures generated from the GEFS for London also show the possibility of it becoming very warm. Most of the runs are in the light orange or darker orange category, so 16 to 20 and 21 to 25 Celsius. There are a few reds beginning to appear though. Those are runs going for between 26 and 30 Celsius, hot almost, rather than very warm. A minority at this point, but as I say, it really does need watching closely just to see whether that trend continues in the coming days. Some cooler runs still showing there, 11s to 15s, but they are in a minority, up to about 23%, maybe a little bit more later on. But generally, the theme is for temperatures to be close to or above the average, possibly becoming very warm or even nudging up towards the hot category. But at the moment, that just remains a relatively small chance. The a, a comparable plot for Glasgow shows lower temperatures, which fits in with the air mass profile that I discussed. Mainly light yellows to begin with, the 11s to 15s, still some greens showing up, 6 to 10 Celsius, very cool. And also some of the oranges, which are 16 to 20. Of course, you would expect it to be cooler in the northwest, as this indicates. All in all, I would say, though, closer to average for the respective locations in the northwest than in the southeast, where the focus is very much on average or above it. The pressure chart for uh, York, the data table, which shows the forecast from all of the individual runs in the ensemble for, the, uh, for, for this location, suggests that Low pressure will be having more influence early on. The greens indicate 996 to 1,010 millibars. The amounts of yellows and oranges increase towards the end. Those are 1,011 to 1,025 and 1,026 to 1,040. But again, it really just highlights the uncertainty there at the beginning of the second week in particular uh, over how much influence uh, high pressure to the south of the UK will be having with low pressure to the northwest. G GFS, GEFS may be overemphasizing the influence, I suspect, of low pressure through this period. But nonetheless, nothing, it's, it shouldn't be discounted. And the trend here, which it's showing anyway, is for higher pressure later on. The ensemble mean from the GEFS for Friday the 13th shows us high pressure to the south, low pressure to the northwest. Compare it with the ECM model at the same time, the ensemble mean once again. This has higher pressure further north with the Atlantic probably been more restricted. The Atlantic influence there really focused on the northwest. So a split between the GEFS and the ECM ensembles perhaps developing here, with ECM tending to point towards more settled um, and warm weather, especially in southern and central regions, the GEFS favouring more of a cooler westerly influence. So to summarise, week one, it's changeable early on with showers or longer outbreaks of rain. It then becomes mainly dry through the weekend as high pressure builds. Beyond that, there is a signal for the high pressure to start slipping southwards, and that leads to it turning unsettled in the north. Week two, it's difficult to be confident about the details because computer models are handling the balance between low pressure to the west and the northwest, high pressure to the east to the south of the UK differently. On the whole though, it looks like being changeable in the north with showers or longer outbreaks of rain at times. As you head southwards, there's more emphasis on drier and warmer periods. 
possibly, and it is only a possibility at this stage, it may turn very warm indeed for a time in the south of the UK. That's something to keep an eye on, but it's not a forecast at this stage. So, there we have it. I started off by asking whether there would be any significant rainfall in the forecast. The answer, I think, is yes. Although there is uncertainty even now about the amounts the, which the southern half of the UK can expect, particularly the southeast. But hopefully farmers and growers will at least be spared watering for a few days. Also, in the longer term, there is that signal. It's a very weak one at the moment, but it's worth keeping an eye on for it to turn very warm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.